Hey guys. Hey, I uh, I went and got Snagit. Uh, so um, I'll be able to record longer videos if I if I need to. Um, so there were a lot of trades this week. Uh, market was kind of strange this week. Uh, I didn't get a really good vibe. I didn't trade a heck of a lot this week. I did have a few. Um, I had some really good ones, and I had a couple that weren't so good. Um, but I did want to just point out pound yen, uh, just as an example of uh, one trade I did take, and uh, you know it was on a smaller time frame, and it took about a hundred pips. Uh, actually on this move, which normally I wouldn't trade because this to me looks like a wave B of a correction. Um, but on a lower time frame it looked pretty good and when it broke this trend line I took it. So, But normally I don't trade B waves. But anyways, um, uh, but I wanted to just kind of walk through this one really quick. So if you go out to the weekly, and again I always start high. Weekly, usually the highest. I'll go to a monthly if, if I can't see anything reasonable on the weekly, but this is such a long time frame. The weekly is usually pretty good just to see you know what's going on so so you have this long uptrend this was multiple waves in here this is obviously more than five waves and motive waves don't have to be five waves because of the fractal nature of Elliot um, these these waves can go more than five and clearly this is I haven't counted this but I don't really need to but the motive waves you know it can be five is the most common but it can be nine it can be 13 it can be 17 uh, th you know in those numbers and if um, if you get Elliot's book if you get the Elliot principle book um, you can read about you know how that's you know how that comes about I don't want to get into that now but it just has to do with the fractal nature of the way waves divide and subdivide but you don't need to know that you just see hey we got this big uptrend it ended up here and you can see the divergence on the CCI indicator <clears throat> when the market made a high here the CCI peaked market went up made a new high and it did not be have divergence so that's just classic bearish divergence and I mean if you threw a stochastic or an RSI or whatever your favorite indicator on here you probably would see the same divergence but this multi time frame CCI is uh, to me is preferred for a lot of reasons but you'd probably see the divergence on pretty much any you know um, momentum indicator so but uh, anyways um, so here it is and then we've had this uh, what we'll assume is a correction to this uptrend and uh, there's a big mess on here because I had, was labeling waves Let me get rid of this some of this okay okay so right now this this is sitting at about 38 uh, fib level of this whole up move so that's where it is um, it's a little shallow and I do believe it's going to go down more probably hit the, at least the 50 and then we'll see what happens so this would have been great to trade on the weekly if you had been in it. I did not. I don't usually trade off the weekly because it moves so slow and you got to have huge stop losses. But if uh, if you had seen this one, when this ended, you could be riding this correction all the way down. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of pips. I mean, it's uh, 3,000 pips right now. <laughs> but anyways, um, wishful thinking, right? So, um, But let's go down a little bit. So here's this latest move. And and this looks to be a correction to this to this um, to this move uh, down. So and now there's a perfect five waves here. It's pretty textbook. It's one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And now we're going down. This is actually what I traded in here. So I'm gonna right now assume this is an A, this is a B, and then it's gonna be a C. And right now we are at 50% fib level. But I don't think this is over yet, so it'll probably go to the 61.8. Uh, but it's gonna it's gonna end soon, and then I believe it will go back up for a C wave. And again, C waves typically are usually are about the same as the A. So if it if it is an A, it would be a zigzag. Then it would be a five three five, five ways for wave A, three ways for B, and then five ways for C. It's a thousand pips back up. So let's say it goes to here back up a thousand pips it'll probably go back up to here and then the larger downtrend would probably resume now if this is uh, potentially a start of a new uptrend then this is going to go down and you're going to go up for an impulsive wave three uh, but I don't think it is I think this is I think this downtrend has more to go before it's over I mean you can clearly see this is corrective to this it's going to go up 
and you can also tell because the CCI is not going up uh, uh, compressed it's going up spread apart which usually indicates a correction so you can see when it started going down here the CCI compresses right here crosses through 90 and starts heading down and then when the market corrects the CCI will spread apart like this indicating again that it's this is just a corrective move up so I don't believe this is the start of a new up move I think this is an ABC probably I think it will go up a little further but I think it eventually will come back down pretty hard so um, so again I'm looking at that as an ABC um, and you can maybe see the ABC right here you know well again getting into all the subdivisions um, you know ABC so this C might come a little uh, this is the ABC of B because B on a zigzag is always three waves. So this is a B wave. The, the subdivisions of a B wave are always three waves themselves. So one, two, three. And like I said, this I don't think it's over yet um, by the looks of this, but who knows? This looks like maybe it's got a little bit more to go. This is the one hour chart. Might come down a little more. I'm not sure. We'll see. All right. So. Um, so that's that's what I'm looking at. Um, so I'm I'm probably gonna I'm out of this trade now. I, I took about 110 pips on this. Um, so I'm probably just gonna stand aside and wait. And I'm gonna look for this to resume going up here uh, for a C wave. And uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll get in on that um, next week or whenever that occurs. And um, you know uh, you know we'll see. You can see the CCI here on the 8-hour chart, again, coming down spread apart, which means suggests that this is corrective and it will go back up. So, um, again, I don't rely on these in, on this indicator, but I will use it just kind of a little bit of backup, especially to, to uh, signal what the end of a trend or the end of a correction would be. Um, and you can draw in the trend line. Obviously, this is confirmed. This is just, you know, classic trend line drawing. You draw this in. When it breaks it, that confirms it. So it came through, retested, and then it went. So this would, this probably would be the confirmation right, right about here. So, so anyways, I uh, hope that's helpful. Um, it, the whole point of this again is just to again start at the higher time frames and to work down. And you know, where do you see a trend? You know, I see a trend here. You can see it all in here. You know, what time frame do you go to where you can kind of really see it? Yep, okay, here it is. It, it ended here. Now it's correcting. I'm going to eventually assume it's going to go back up. And you can say, well, it's counter trend to this larger. And that's true. And you don't have to trade this. I mean, you could just sit here and let this whole thing play out over time. I mean, this correction started back in mid-January. And it's probably going to go on for, you know, likely a couple more weeks. But you could sit here and say, all right, I'm just going to wait this thing out, the ABC, and then I'll look for a short way up at the top here and catch a new huge down move but the A and C waves in particular are, are are good waves to trade especially a zigzag because you can you can pick out the waves you can you know you have pretty good targets and it's basically like a little mini trend inside of the larger trend there's nothing wrong with that um, especially if it's on a high enough time frame where it's worthwhile I mean I don't think I'd trade this on a 10 minute chart or anything but on a four-hour chart or somewhere around there, there's plenty of pips here. Like when I measured this again, it was like a thousand pips. This is the pound yen. So certainly it's worth it if you can uh, time it right. And uh, again, I usually don't trade the B. Um, I did trade a piece of it this time just because it was so obvious. But uh, anyway, so hope that's helpful. And um, uh, I'll, I will try to do some more of these as we go along um, as I get some... Uh, some good trades. I said I didn't take a lot this week, so I don't have a heck of a lot. Uh, I may do one or two more, um, but that'll probably be it. Also, I'm going to be away next week uh, for for business, unfortunately. <laughs> Although I'll be in Florida, so at least it'll be warm because I'm here in Connecticut and we just got a ton of snow and lost our power for most of the day, so it was fun. But uh, so I'll be away next week, so uh, I, I will be in the Skype room probably at night a little bit, maybe very early in the morning, but that's it won't be on at all during the day um, <clears throat> and if I do any videos they'll, they'll be at night but I don't know how many I'll do because we got a lot going on so uh, but I will be keeping an eye on on things and again I don't know how many trades I'll place because I don't know how close I can watch stuff but if there's anything obvious I will be on it hopefully with the pairs that I trade so 
anyway so that's it um hope you guys have a great weekend like i said i may try to do one or two more but if not guys have a great weekend and a good week next week if you have any questions